a very good morning to you. Now, this is back to front, isn't it? So, do it like that. This is Friday the 13th. <laughs> yes, it is, Jack. <laughs> and I want to read you a little bit of In Search of the Goddess Rising because Friday the 13th is a very auspicious day. In fact, the 13th day of any month is very auspicious. And <clears throat> it is so because the number 13 is the number of the Divine Feminine. As many of you already will have watched videos and read blogs that I've put up. I've mentioned before about 13 being this sacred number, this incredibly powerful number. And the powerful number is because 13 is directly related to the moon and the cycles of the moon. And of course the moon is very much a force which governs women. We are tightly woven into the water cycle. And the water cycle, as we all know from our very basic education, is controlled by the moon. The moon pulls the water on Mother Earth backwards and forwards twice a day. The moon has 13 cycles in the year. A woman within her, within her lifetime of fertility has 13 cycles, 13 menses. A year. We refer to the moon as she. We talk about the moon goddess. More babies are born during a full moon. The moon is um, sewn up into a tapestry of letting go and having no control and being wild and free. We take the word lunacy from lunar, the moon, because it is recorded that in the old bedlams, the old mental asylums, the old lunatic asylums, people became wild during the full moon. Cats are governed by the moon. Feline is regarded as like a feminine word. Women are attached to cats. Many men are too, of course. But in this instance, I'm talking directly about the number 13 and how powerful that number is for us. So I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to read a chapter, a very short chapter in this book, In Search of the Goddess Rising. I'm going to point the camera over this way. And I'll just find... Find this page. I always find um, that the thirteenth day of any month, um, and especially Friday the thirteenth, which is which is very cunningly 
referred to as being unlucky. Of course, that's another aspect of how women have been kept in a very tight, small space. And, of course, whatever, whatever we do to women, we do to Mother Earth, and whatever we do to Mother Earth, we seem to do to women. It's, it's very tightly bound. And uh, I like to think that this book that I wrote in the 13th year of Bealton Cottage begins to examine and uncover and unravel some of that mystery. So this is chapter 8 and um, it's called A Goddess for the 21st Century. Thirteen years ago my life was devoid of any notion of the goddess. It seemed almost heretical to use the word goddess as this challenged the role of God which had shaped my view of life, m I'm sorry, my view of the world and all of life. Indeed, the idea that the earth was an intelligent life form able to react as one entity to whatever humankind inflicted upon her seemed ridiculous. So what changed my view? In short, 13 years of nurturing a small piece of her back to health. One could add that for the past 13 years I have been on a spiritual retreat. The culture of the West and its reliance on centralised government has lost its way regarding nature, seeing her only as a resource. The way in which patriarchal institutions have regarded and treated our sacred earth has brought humanity to the brink of near extinction. Though not before we kill off as many other life forms as we can manage in this destruction of our own habitat. Politically, governments have aligned themselves and us with the world of big business. The forces that operate such a world are psychopathic in nature, with a distinct set of personality characteristics, which include things like ruthlessness, fearlessness, mental toughness, charm, persuasiveness, and a lack of conscience and empathy. Any aspect of society where there is a power structure, a hierarchy, the ability to manipulate or wield control over people, one will find psychopaths doing very well. The madness of the policy of continued economic growth amid finite energy sources and all to create more and more wealth for a very few continues unabated. These are the forces of destruction that are systematically destroying the sensitive ecosystems which support life on Earth. As I seek the goddess within this small area of Ireland, I am, I am increasingly aware of why she has not just hidden herself, but become almost invisible within the landscape. One must look closely. It is incredible to think that gardening and growing food as we know it today has only been operative since World War I, including the use of chemicals on the land. Rarely is nature now regarded as sacred, valuable and in any way seriously considered. This has happened in less than three generations. 
The heart of the Celtic understanding of nature is to regard the female, the goddess, and the divine in all living things. Within Celtic mythology, the king or ruler is assumed to marry the land in the persona of the sovereign goddess. In this way they become partners without domination of one over the other. Marriage was regarded in this culture as a joining of equals. What would earth look like today if we regarded the environment as our partner instead of our servant? To see the great goddess and mother earth to honour the sacred soil instead of seeing only dominion over dirt. The evolution from permaculture to goddess permaculture here at Bealtaine Cottage has impacted on the way I now see Mother Earth. The sacred feminine is reawakening within the landscape, no longer ignored and hidden. Goddess permaculture is now is about working hand in hand with nature and recognizing her sovereignty in all that lives. For those who are beginning to tread this path to awakening, this brings a remarkable sense of the divine and the sacred nature of Gaia. The, primor the primordial deity for our Paleolithic and Neolithic ancestors was female, reflecting the sovereignty of motherhood. In fact, there are no images that have been found of a father god throughout the prehistoric record. Paleolithic and Neolithic symbols and images cluster around a self-generating goddess and her basic functions as giver of life, wielder of death and as regenerative. The multiple categories, functions and symbols used by prehistoric peoples to express the great mystery are all aspects of the unbroken unity of one deity, a goddess who is ultimately nature herself. Maria Gimbutas Although the great goddess infers only one, she appears as many forms of goddesses, each one emphasising an attribute of the one Divine Mother. And that's very much how I have come to understand her and why you hear me speaking in terms of she, in terms of her or the great goddess, or Gaia, or Mother, or Mother Earth. Because all these names refer to the power that I feel here at Bealtaine Cottage, where her place has been secured, and the boundaries in which she has manifested have helped to protect her. And what I now regard as goddess permaculture and how I come to see the divinity in the number 13. And all I can add to this is that this is my journey. It's my personal, sacred journey of life. Wherever you are on that path, however you see it, 
However you have come to understand this, that's your journey. This is day 40 of our drought here in Ireland and we've been told on the radio to expect at least another 10 days of it. I'm happy to say that Bealtaine is holding, holding herself, holding herself well. There are obvious minuses within a drought, but there are many pluses as well. And I'm just looking here at this beautiful valerian, which is now seeding. Can you see all those beautiful little seeds coming? Well, if there was lots of rain, there wouldn't be that many seeds. So the heat, and in many ways the drought, for valerian at least, has brought on an abundance of seeds. So I'll be taking all those seeds and shaking them round into the gravel, knowing that next year, if we have a drought, that those valerian flowers will do very well in dry gravel. And they're very happy in a dry stone wall or even an old piece of rubble or Concrete even. So, everything here on the north side of the house is held in well. I haven't put any water in here at all. But you can see the growth is very, very rich. And here's the willow herb. Not this beautiful willow herb out. So on that note, I shall go in and load up this video and make myself some tea and have a very late breakfast because I've been busy and t busy tidying up and um, oh by the way, um, at the very beginning of this video you saw me momentarily and um, the dress I'm wearing is part of the what I call the Belfast Hall. <laughs> And the Belfast Hall, of course, is um, um, some, some of which I, I showed you last night on the video. But I've got other lovely bits and pieces of clothes. I paid £4 for this dress. And um, there you go. Keeping things in a cycle and uh, happily aware that there's more than enough stuff here in the Western world to keep recycling and going round and round. So blessings to you all and a very happy Friday the 13th. And there's a link to In Search of the Goddess Rising and the website bealtonacottage.com where it can be purchased. And thanks for supporting Bealtaine Cottage. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing. And blessings to you all. <laughs>